the valley of the shadow of death I take a look at my life and realize there's nothing left Cause I've been blasting and laughing for so, so long That eat my mama thing, now my mind is gone And I ain't never crossed a man who didn't deserve it Me be treated like a punk, you know that's unheard of You better watch how you're talking and where you're walking Or oh, you and your homies might be lying and talking I really hate to trip, but I gotta look As I croak, I see myself in that pistol smoke Oh, I'm the kind of G the little homies wanna be Like on my knees in the night Saying prayers in the street light Been spending most of their lives Living in the gangster's paradise Been spending most of their lives Living in the gangster's paradise look at the- Hello, everyone. It's Lydia and the rest of the Broken Lord's Tabletop podcast. And we're on Grand Monocle Island, a place practically engineered for resort vacationing and tropical getaways. The weather's so nice, in fact, it might be fake. The cherry on top of this decadent Sunday is the Grand Monocle Hotel, site of this year's Grow and Show Spectacular. Our intrepid group of rabbits hatched a plan. Grab the rarest of the rare Middle Mist Red Blossom being showcased at the Shigoran show, and then retire in excellent carrot cake laden comfort. Of course, other stuff happened as they worked their way towards that goal. Here's what happened last time. Pesto's persona, Fiersa, got on stage with Melvin the Magician. It managed to, uh, accidentally, can you hear my finger quotes, stab him with some help from Jack up above in the air vents. Meanwhile, Hopper waited in the dark, in clown shoes. (laughs) After the accident occurred, Melvin was brought backstage. That's when Hopper saw his opening, cut (laughs) both of Melvin the Magician's Achilles tendons, and all figurative hell broke loose. Fiersa befriended Bianca, the show rabbit, and started their getaway. That is where we left off. We were in this room, correct? For the most part, everybody was in the theater. So if I remember right... I was in the vents? I forget. I am also still in the vents. I believe my bro and I were still over by the buffet table while the stabbing happened. Would you like to introduce yourselves? That's probably a good call. Corey plays the role of... I am Vinny Hops. I am a Flemish giant, so a very large rabbit, and I am the getaway driver. Codename Sweet Boy. That's right. We also have Ethan. Hey, guys. I'm Gus the Roundhouse Mulligan. Uh, I'm also a Flemish giant, and uh, I like croutons. Your nickname's Squeeze and Paw. That's true. Oh, I thought that's just what he had. <laughs> yes. It could be both. <laughs> Por que no los dos? I wasn't aware we had nicknames. They're what I wrote down. <laughs> Next in the roster is Jordan. Hi. I played the Jack Rabbit Jumpin' Jack Flash, and I'm the if I remember correctly, I'm the brains of the operation. You are the or- brains of the operation. What a terrible mistake. <laughs> the math rocks chose, not us. <laughs> Making mistakes is what we do best, so that's true. That is that is very on brand for us. Socks is here as M. Chaucets. Yeah, see, the name's M. Chaucets. See, hacker of the group. See, nobody fails at hacking quite like I do. See, that's why they take me on these things. On <laughs> <laughs> mine, you've been to his own failure. <laughs> the chips are down. You might as well bet on black. That way, you can lose twice as fast. See? <laughs> <laughs> Always bet on double zero. See, it's the only way to win chips in this casino. That's what I'm saying to you. See? <laughs> Oh man, I, I, guess, I guess that leaves me. <laughs> we do have you, Zoop, and we also have Snidely. Snidely, go. I guess you can go first. All right, I'm Snidely. I'm playing the uh, Netherlands dwarf rabbit, so the smallest of the group, who's a klutz and the enforcer of the group. My name's Zoop, but I'm playing the role of Pesto Pescatelli, aka Pesto, and no one's telling me that I ain't the brains of this group. I'm too old for this shit. Giorgio Ain't you Giorgio Pescatelli? Pescatelli. 
he changes his name pretty often, actually. <laughs> it's got Alzheimer's. See, he doesn't remember nothing about who he's supposed to be. We got to keep reminding him. Come on. <laughs> I'm too old to think about what my name is. In the old country, we didn't have names. True. He pointed and said, hey, you. Oh, my fucking God. I forgot the old country didn't have names. <laughs> or nouns. <laughs> or nouns. nouns. The old country, country did not have nouns at all. <laughs> we didn't believe in nouns. Nouns were soft. Verbs are the thing. Verbs are a sign of a strong, <laughs> strong bunny. <laughs> Oh, oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! It's gonna be like that, huh? All right. Yeah. No, we're screwed. <laughs> we'll be lucky if we get out of this casino ever. We're gonna be. We're gonna hit Bunny Heist episode eighty, and we're not. Well, gonna be out of here. Uh, for everyone's benefit, to reinforce the rules, Corey is indeed the driver. Ethan is the face. Jordan, you are the brains of the operation, as we've established. Socks, you're failing your way to the top as the best hacker that never did. Yep. <laughs> Don't ever let anyone tell you I can't fail. The paragon of failure. <laughs> Snide and Zoob, you were both enforcement on this vegetable operation. Now, let me describe what's going on. It appears to the collective human cast and crew backstage that a clown jumped out of the shadows sliced melvin the magician maybe not sure and now the clown has jumped back into the shadows disappeared leaving only his <laughs> shoes behind somehow and the magician has fallen out of his chair he's not just bleeding from his thigh anymore he's bleeding profusely his pants are ruined i almost forgotten that step one of this plan was ruin a man's life thanks for reminding me Yes, that's why I'm describing the scene. Don't forget that the final step of the plan after we finish the heist is we're going to kill that guy. Yeah, Wasn't in no. the middle of that we're taking his shoes and his jacket so he can, like, stack up and be ten- yes. pretend to be one magician? Sorry, I just thought of three kobolds in a trench coat. Yep. Backstage crew and the bunny girl stage hands are surrounding Melvin. Um, somebody's calling on a radio. Jack and M. Chaucets are up in the air vents above this scene, just witnessing the chaos unfurl. Pesto has just escorted a small white rabbit out of her cage. She was going to be part of the next act. Hopper has dived into a pile of shoes. In line with the plan you were you just mentioned, they are taking Melvin's clothes off so they can assess damage, bandage him, whatever. Out in the audience, Vinny... Gus and... Gus and I yeah. are still stuffing our faces. <laughs> Vinny and Gus are eating well. Well, I mean, they're eating a lot, maybe not well. <laughs> There's a lot of carbohydrates going around. And uh, Listen, at any time, this could go sideways and we could die. And I'm going to have a full belly when I die, damn it. GI stasis is a true rabbit threat. <laughs> the more you Fear know. Fear eating. It's what Gus does. It's probably true. <laughs> Yeah, the curtain has dropped. It sounds like there's commotion backstage and not a good kind. There's like this energy of like hush whispered like nervousness. That act, the last act was weird, but it seems like they're going on with it anyway. The the tone isn't good for a show. Let's put it that way. Vinny is going to finish munching on a piece of lettuce from the uh, salad bar, which we are dominating right now. And gonna he's going to turn and look at Gus, who's just covered in crouton and bread steak. He'll be like, clean yourself off, Gus. It's showtime. Gus, like, removes his face from, like, a salad boy's like, huh? Yeah, ranch cake to my fur. Ranch still dripping off of his cheek. Salad over my (laughs) eyes. There's a lady shaking her head and, like, lecturing her child not to be like me too far off. (laughs) It's actually interesting the number of kids that actually came to this show. Because it seems more like a event geared towards professionals. But you do know every so often somebody brought their kids. It's plants. Plants are good. So, wouldn't you want your child exposed to good things? Yeah, they have to aspire to become one of the booth babes hanging out in the vendor hall. <laughs> yeah. Flower Con 2020. Oh, no. 
Yeah, there's a lot of Poison Ivy cosplay going on right here. This is a flower show. This isn't a con. <laughs> Damn. You're telling me I dr- Wait, I'm I- cosplaying a flakus for nothing? <laughs> this is bullshit. I thought this was a flower show. When did this turn into, like, Dragon Con? It, it, it is a flower show. Look, there, if there's any cosplay around here at all, it's the mandatory there's a massive event happening, so there's a man Misty somewhere. There's always a man Misty. Always. <laughs> Alright, I'm, I'm walking away from this cosplay hell, and uh, we're gonna <laughs> walk right back into the plot. Here are my feet walking <laughs> towards the plot. Hi, Lydia. What's the plot? Hi. <laughs> you bring... Her name's Bianca. Uh, along with you. Oh! How are you bringing I'm... her? Uh, you're still in these excellent, like, Louboutin-esque high heels, which suit your fiercer persona so well. I'm going to utilize a, my schmooze ability as I roll some crime, <laughs> as I act like a distressed woman who just saw, like, a horrific sight because, you know, the magician and getting stabbed. So I'm going to, like, cry and, like, run off the stage. Holding Bianca. Meanwhile, I'm gonna. I, I'm just gonna sneak back to Gus. After all, he needs his therapy rabbit. <laughs> She's a rabbit. How are you? How are you holding her? She's a rabbit. Don't worry about it. But he's also a rabbit. You don't worry about <laughs> problems like that in this game. That would be like I run to my car, just you know, holding a fucking <laughs> woman. She's probably it's just fine. Whatever. She's on my back, I guess. Yeah. Because because everyone knows one human being <laughs> cannot carry another human Simple being, laws guess. of physics. When I see them, like, clearing the backstage, I'm going to try and, like, gently lead Gus away from the buffet line so we can, can meet up with him on the way out. And, uh, <laughs> like, as we're passing that woman that was, like... That was like, don't be a fatty to her child. I'm just going to, like, low-key... <laughs> I was going to be, like, low-key... Careful, lady. Salad buffets are a dangerous place, and I'm just going to keep walking. What? <laughs> As he's doing this, I pull out my squeezing pod. and I just make the gripping motion, like, in the, in, like, the full view of the parent and child. Just walk away. Oh, fuck? my God. What the fuck? Fucking... Uh... <laughs> Listen, Gus is so fat, like, he towers over everyone, regardless of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> to human perception, you are human as long as you're wearing shoes. Oh, I thought we looked like Oompa Loompas or something in these shoes. We're just regular people. <laughs> oh, man, that's even more funny. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're what we want to be. It's like some Wolf's Rain shit, but we're grabbing instead of Wolf. Oh, God, Wolf's Rain. Oh, man, what a dark time. If if that's the case, I want my persona of Furiosa to look like a very strong woman in like one of those unitar dresses. Yes. <laughs> as I as I carry B- Bianca <laughs> off stage crying. Bianca is a a Netherland dwarf like Hopper, uh, but it's still a bit of yes. an awkward yes. carry. Just a bit. Uh there's murmuring in the audience. And the general question you hear with your excellent ears, anybody who's in that uh, audience area, is, is this part of the act? Is this part of the show? What's going on? Okay, I think this is the part where I want to make my play. <laughs> yeah, because you got to get on the this. magician's shoes. It's true. Uh, are okay. they, like, you know, I'm assuming, like, you know, they, they're taking off his, his shoes to, like, you know, assist with bandaging his legs, checking out the attendant situation. Yeah. Shoes have been removed and actually chucked into the pile of shoes where Hopper it was staking out and might still be hiding. No, I said I was making yeah. my way back to Ethan. He needs his therapy rabbit. That's right. You did say that. Okay. So Hopper's now abandoned hiding spot. A pile of shoes is indeed that, a pile of shoes. And they include bunny girl shoes, the magician shoes, clown shoes, just... If you can probably find it at a circus, okay. it's there. So I'm, I'm going to try and use the distraction of, oh my god, both this man's Achilles tendons have been cut to try and sneak past 